so. Ten miles into the mountains we came to a stream where a bridge had been washed away. The water was deep and icy cold. There was one place where we might have been able to cross by leaping from rock to rock, but it would have been mean, but it would mean risking a fall into the rapids. As we stood there trying to decide what to do, three different perspectives surfaced. One person saw the stream as a dangerous obstacle, afraid that one of us might fall in and be swept away. He wanted to turn back and look for another trail. Another friend saw the stream as a means to show how tough he was. He wanted to wade straight across, even if that meant we would have to be wet and cold for a few hours. But two of us saw the stream as an interesting challenge. We studied the rocks leading to the other side and determined where we would need additional footing. Finding a fallen tree in the woods, we laid it across the largest gap between the rocks. At this point, our two friends began to cooperate with us. Working together, we managed to get one person over to the other bank. Then the two of us passed or stood on rocks in the middle of the stream, and the packs were passed to the other side. And then one by one, we jumped from rock to rock, receiving support from the person ahead. And before long, we were all on the far bank, perfectly dry, exhilarating by our accomplishments. People handle conflict in the same way that these men handle this problem at the stream. Okay? To some, Conflict. Is that a bad word? If you look in a dictionary, is it listed under the bad word section of the dictionary? Okay. Conflict. Conflict sometimes is necessary. You guys realize that? If there was no such thing as conflict, you would not have a United States of America today. Okay. Because the people over here did not want to be taxed by the people over there, there was conflict. And that conflict created a brand new nation. So, conflict in and of itself is not a bad word or a bad term. As I said, God will use conflict to show His power and show His grace. But people handle conflict in the same way these guys look at the conflict of this stream. To some, conflict is a hazard, causes pain. It should be avoided at all costs. Okay? To others, conflict is a challenge. Bless you, is a challenge to show bravery to show power and to be tackled head on not caring about the consequences of how you deal with conflict. Have you ever met people like that? Have you ever had a boss like that? Okay? They don't make such great bosses. They also don't make such great friends because they tend to get you in trouble. Okay? The third way to look at conflict is as an of conflict. 
Now, do you guys have any idea how you would show God's grace and God's power through conflict? Donald, can we erase that? Well, it's a case of Martin Luther. He, uh, he raised a question and he challenged the situation. Martin Luther. Martin Luther was one of these guys that when he came into conflict, he was used to handling it straight on. Okay? Now, God's grace worked in that man's life because as conflict with the church kept coming up and kept arising, Martin Luther had a choice. Now, you realize that Martin Luther never wanted to break away from the Catholic Church. What he wanted to do was reform it. Luther saw that that church could be traced back all the way to the apostles. And he wanted to reform it. Never intended to start a whole new church. But there came a certain point where God showed him and that he realized that this institution was so big that it was never going to reform. And he had to make a decision and a choice. Now, do you realize that there were plenty of princes and people who were ready to take up arms for Martin Luther? And that they would have spilt a lot of blood for his cause? And he said, no, this is not the way God wants us to handle this. And if you look at the early reformers, because you know the history of Europe, it was just one war after another after another. That the early reformers did not want bloodshed because that's not the way Christ works. In our day today, we have gotten so used to conflict and to blaming each other and to not just blaming each other, but those people that do not agree with you have now become your enemies and they should be destroyed at all costs. We are willing to shed blood. Literally, or through gossip, that we think that is what God wants us to do. Isn't that the way Saul was before God converted him to Paul? That he was so zealous for God that he was willing to kill Christians and he thought he was doing God's will? How many of you guys look at the internet? You ever go on some of these uh, forums, uh, Adventist forums, where they're talking about any number of doctrines or things within the church and the language that is used there? You ask yourself, now I'm not talking about swearing, what I'm talking about is attacking. Where is Christ in this? How do you handle conflict in a way that glorifies God and you're destroying your what you perceive as your enemy? That's not how God intended for us to handle conflict. I will close with this and I'll let you think about this. This is a hill. It's not a pretty one, but it is a hill. Okay? If you were to walk on this thing, this is pretty level ground, is that right? But when you get to these edges here, what would happen? It becomes pretty slippery, right? These edges here, these edges here. These are the slippery slopes of conflict. Okay? Right in here on this flat surface, these are the peace. making responses to conflict. On this side is the escape responses. Okay? Three responses to conflict. On this side is the attack.
responses. On your escape responses, there's three categories in there. There is flight, to run away from the conflict. There's denial, just pretend that conflict isn't taking place. The third one of escape is the most serious, and that is the suicide response. Right? Have you guys known or have heard of people who have committed suicide because of conflict that they're dealing with. And it is a sad statement of our day and age that that has become a way out for a lot of people. Teenagers are very susceptible, very susceptible to the suicide escape, the conflict. And it is tragic. So within that, you have, as I said, flight, denial, suicide. On the attack side, you have litigation, I take you to court, I bring somebody in there to try to mediate the problem, okay? You have assault, I attack you physically. In the church that usually doesn't happen, but it does happen. Uh, mostly in the church what happens is uh, verbal assault. I will attack your character. To your face or behind your back. The problem with the attack responses is that if taken too far, just like the escape response, the escape, the most detrimental is a suicide. And the attack responses, the most detrimental is murder. Does that happen on a daily basis? Yeah. Right? How uh, do you deal with conflict? It turns into murder. Cain and Abel. Did Cain have a conflict with his brother? Did he deal with that conflict well? No. Now, do you think that Abel knew that Cain was upset with him? Doesn't tell you, and that story it doesn't say. But, I want you to think about this, because nobody ever talks about it. Do you think that Abel knew that Cain was mad at him? Yes. I think it, it does, because you know that if he was so mad that he was willing to kill him, that when he spoke to him, when he was around him, that anger came out. Right? Because don't we do the same thing if we have a rift within the family? And all of us get together, I may totally ignore you. Or when I speak to you, it's very short. My tone may be sharp. So you think maybe Abel knew. And yet Cain said, let us go out into the field, two by two, together, <coughs> just them two, right? Cain knew what he was going to do. That's why it was murder, because it was premeditated. And yet Abel went with him. Why do you think that is? Any idea? Good. Trusted him and... Abel wanted to work out this situation with Cain. He wanted to resolve the conflict and bring glory to his God. And he was willing to put himself in harm's way and at risk to do it. And I'm going to end there because, brothers and sisters, when you deal with conflict, you will have to get to this point where you're willing to put yourself in harm's way to deal with conflict. Now, we're not talking murder, but we are talking about feelings. We're talking about vulnerability, being misunderstood, maybe allowing yourself to be misrepresented. In the end, it's still painful, which is why a lot of people just run away from these things, or why others will go on the attack so they can control the situation without actually dealing with the situation. Does this make sense to you guys? <coughs> okay, well, next week we'll look more at these three responses to conflict. And out of these three, where do you think God's viewpoint and response would be? Right here. And that's what we'll look at again next week. 
Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 590.